Well, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church in Hazlitt, Texas. It's time for our daily devotions. We are in Isaiah chapter 30 today, and we're starting at verse 15. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. And repentance and rest is your salvation, and quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. You said, no, we will flee on horses. Therefore, you will flee. You said, we will ride off on swift horses. Therefore, your pursuers will be swift. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you will all flee away. Till you are left like a flagstaff on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you. He rises to show you compassion. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for him. O people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. <coughs> How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. Whether you turn to the light, or I'm sorry, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Then you will defile your idols overlaid with silver and your images covered with gold. You will throw them away like a menstrual cloth and say to them, away with you. He will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground and the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will graze in broad meadows. The oxen and donkeys that work the soil will eat fodder and mash spread out with fork and shovel. In the day of great slaughter, when the towers fall, streams of water will flow on every high mountain and every lofty hill. The moon will shine like the sun, and the sunlight will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven full days when the Lord binds up the bruises of his people and heals the wounds he afflicted. All right, so... Um, this is actually a, both an oracle of judgment and an oracle of resurrection uh, because it's directed against the Assyrians. The Assyrians were an empire at the time in the 8th century BC that had conquered uh, many different lands and they were moving now towards uh, Jerusalem itself, the capital city. And so they had come uh, all the way through northern Israel. They had conquered the ten tribes. And now they were literally at the doorstep of Jerusalem. And you have to go into the accounts of uh, Kings and Chronicles to get more of the story here. Isaiah is prophesying that God has afflicted his people, allowing the Assyrians to come upon them. Uh, but uh, at the end of the passages today, God says that he will deliver them. He will bind up the wounds that he himself um, initiated. You know, all the people have to do, or I don't want to say that, but, but, but all the people are called to do is to trust in him, right? G uh, God says at the beginning of the oracle today, the prophecy today, um, let me make sure I get this right. I have to look close. In repentance and rest is your salvation. Uh, but then the people talk about fleeing on horses, right? Like they think they're going to be able to get away by running away. And God says, no, just repent and rest, and, and you will see your salvation, that, that God will deliver the, the people. And Hezekiah is the king of Israel. I'm, I'm sorry, he's the king of Jerusalem at this time. And what he initially does to get the Assyrians to go away is he pays them off, and, and he pays them tribute. And there's the story that he has to strip the columns outside of the front of the temple to have enough gold to pay them off. And so he pays them off, they go back to Assyria, but then they come back, and now they're going to come back with all these forces and armies and, excuse me, and they're going to lay siege to Jerusalem itself. But Hezekiah will have this prayer, and Isaiah will say to Hezekiah that God hears your prayer, and then that night is when the scriptures speak about God slaying 185,000 Assyrian soldiers and then Sennacherib, who is the king of Assyria, has to go back, and the defeat is so humiliating that uh, they slay him in his own land. 
And so that's the story here, that, that Hezekiah trusts in God for deliverance, just as Isaiah had called him to, and that because Hezekiah trusts in God, the king of Israel trusts in God, God delivers the city, right? And, and so that's, that's the story here. We're hearing about this from Isaiah's point of view as he is giving the prophecy that God will then bind up uh, Judah. He will bind up Jerusalem from the wounds that he brought upon them from the Assyrians. Uh, they never get to move into and capture the whole city of Jerusalem. They just get to its gates. They sort of, they conquer everything around it. They conquer Israel's, uh, or I'm sorry, Judah's neighbors um, to the north, which would have been the 10 northern tribes of Israel because they were unfaithful and they did not repent. But he will spare Jerusalem because Jerusalem does repent and it does acknowledge its sins and faults. And then Isaiah the prophet prophesies that uh, Judah will be bound up and uh, God will, um, will, will tend to her wounds and will save her at least for a time because then Judah will go backwards again and uh, the same will not be said when the Babylonians come along. Uh, they follow the Assyrians and that happens about some 150 years later. So, all right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, announcements for today. So um, Saturday night, we have the church Christmas party happening here at 6.30 p.m. We're going to decorate the Fellowship Hall, and uh, we're asking for you to bring a dish to share as well as a you know, $10 to $20 white elephant gift that can be dropped in a gift exchange that we'll also have um, that same evening. There is no youth confirmation this coming Sunday, and there is no adult confirmation anymore. Uh, on Monday night because we have um, finished both of those for the year. Christmas Eve service is going to be at 5 p.m. And then uh, we're continuing with our Lutheranism during the Third Reich Bible study this coming Sunday um, for adult class. And we're going to be talking about the foundations for anti-Semitism, that there have been many who have accused the early church um, after the time of the Apostles for sowing the seeds and creating the framework for anti-Semitism that led up to the modern or, you know, the early 20th century Holocaust. So we're going to be examining those claims, whether or not they're true. We're going to be looking at the sermons of early Christian preachers like Chrysostom and uh, Martyr and um, Augustine. And we're going to see if uh, whether or not they were preaching things that, that paved the way for anti-Semitism. So, and we're also going to be looking at whether or not um, all of the claims about the church, uh, whether or not everything that the early church preached that might be considered by some to be anti-Semitism, if it really was anti-Semitism. So uh, I don't think we're going to get all this covered in one class. I'm probably going to have to break this up into two classes. But, um, you know, it's going to be a great study. You're going to be hearing and learning about things that you haven't before. And I, I think it's going to be it's going to provide you with a great theological understanding of sermons from that time, as well as, uh, you know, whether or not anti-Semitism really um, occurred in these uh, early preachers. So I hope you can come. I hope you'll be here this coming Sunday, 9.30 a.m., be on time. All right, God bless you, and uh, Claire will be here tomorrow, and uh, I'll see you again on Saturday.